Hi everyone, in this video we'll be learning how to add Stripe Payment Gateway inside of Shutter application. By the end of this video, we are going to be creating a simple app where we expect the user to pass some shipping information and after that we will integrate our application with Stripe Payment Gateway and we'll be creating this simple application where we just accept the amount and complete the payment using Stripe. So let's start. Let us start by creating a new Flutter project here. Select Flutter and choose the SDK part. Let us give the name as Stripe Payment Flutter. Click on create. It will create a new Flutter project. First, we need to visit pub.dev and here we need to add the Flutter Stripe plugin. Open the terminal and type Flutter pub add Flutter Stripe and it will add the dependency inside your pubsec.yml file. So now Flutter Stripe has been added. Now let us go to the documentation. Now if we don't follow the setups carefully, then our app will not work. First, we need to change the API level to 21. From here, we need to visit Android app build.gradle. Here we need to change the minimum SDK version to 21. Now next we need to use Kotlin 1.5.0 and above. Just open this example. Here we need to add this build script like this and paste this. Now we are good to go. Now next, we need to use Android Gradle version 8 or higher. So for that, let us first check the version of Gradle that we are using. Visit the Gradle folder and here visit Gradle.properties. Here you will find that we are using Gradle 7. So we need to change this. Let us use Gradle 8.4 and save it. Here inside build.gradle we need to do some changes it will be 3 point take the suggestion that is given 3.1 and we need to also do the same changes like changing the Kotlin version and also the Gradle version here inside settings.gradle the Kotlin version was 1.8.10 change this here and also the Gradle version, it was 8.3.1. Let's change it. Let us go to the next step. Here we need to change our light theme and dark theme. So visit this example. We need to change the style and convert this to material theme components. Android app SRC. Mean, less values, styles.xml. This is the line that we need to modify. We can simply copy it from here and paste it. And also, the same thing will be applied for the night theme. Visit styles.xml and convert this to material theme component. Now we have also completed this step. Now it's asking us for the latest build.gradle. We have completed this step. Now we need to just modify our main activity.kotlin file. Here, instead of flutter activity, it will be flutter fragment activity. Just copy this two lines inside main kotlin main activity. Just Paste it here. It will not be main activity. Instead, it will be Flutter of Fragment activity. Now just save it. 
we need to create a new file. It will be proga.rules.pro. It will be inside our Android app folder. App here. Create a new file. Name it as proga.tools.pro. Copy the code from here. And paste it. And now we need to rebuild the app. And we should not auto reload it. Now for iOS. We need to modify that we need to add this code inside our info.plist file to open iOS folder inside runner you will find info.plist here just just paste this following code and inside your port file you need to change the target version to iOS 13 so let's try to run the demo flutter app on running the application, we are getting this issue. So here it's asking us to provide the Android NDK version. Just copy this and open build.gradle inside app. This one. And here, here we are using flutter.ndk version. It will be the version that is asking us to provide like this. And stop the app. And now run the app again. Our application is not causing any problem. It means that we have successfully set up Stripe for our Android application. And now if we get any problem regarding the Gradle version, if we, you can try increasing or decreasing the Gradle version and also changing uh, and also try to take the suggestion that it's providing like in my case it's providing the suggestion of 3.1 it might be different for you so try to take the suggestion that android studio is providing and also uh, replicate the same thing also replicate the same version here the gradle version and the kotlin version Inside of build.gradle file, we also need to add the Stripe implementation. So for that, just paste this code. It will add the Stripe implementation for Android. Now let's work on the UI part. First, remove the uh, demo homepage. We don't need it. You will create a new file. It will be our home.dart file. Here we'll be creating a stateful widget. Let us give the name as home page. We need to import material.dart. I mean, first you will start by having a scaffold. Then let us create a new folder here. The name this is assets. First we'll use some images. This dragon dropped image. Let's rename the image and here we'll be also creating one more file. It will be our environment variable file .env. Here we'll be storing our secret keys. Now we need to modify our pubsec.yml file because we are using assets. So here we'll uncomment this and for our assets we'll be having the name of the folder is source assets everything uh, inside assets folder and then our dot env file now we'll just save it now our dependencies have been added now here we'll be using our home page that we are creating now Now inside the scaffold, we'll have a column and column will have some children's. We'll be using our asset image that we have already added in pubsec.camel file. So for this, we'll be using the image widget and also providing the asset image. And here we'll be adding the height and width. And we also need to provide the box width 
to boxfit.cover. We are using boxfit.cover because it will cover the area of height and width that we have specified. Now, after that, we'll be having a padding and it will have a child of column. The cross axis alignment of column will be start. We want to align each, each items in start and column will have children's. Here in children will have a text widget. Text will be uh, support us with your donations. And we will be also adding some styles. For that, let's use style as text style. Here we'll provide the font size as 28 and font weight as font weight dot bold. Now it will look something like this. Now after our text widget, we'll be adding a small sized box of height 6. And after that, we'll be adding the text form field. So for creating a reusable text form field, let us create a separate file. Let's name it as constants.dart. And it will be a stateful widget. Let's name it as reusable. Text field. We also need to import material.dart. Now we need to accept some parameters for our text field. For our reusable text field. Like the title, hint, is number or not. And the text editing controller and the form key that will we are going to use it for validation and then add the formal parameters instead of the placeholder, it will be a text form field. Now, for our keyboard type, if the is number property is not provided, then it means that it's a type of text so we'll use the keyboard as input type dot text else we'll be using input type dot number for decoration we'll be using input decoration and here we'll use the label as text widget dot title and for hint we'll be using we'll be using widget dot hint now let us create some text editing controllers and we'll be also needing some form keys that can be used for validations for all these text editing controllers now let us use the usable text form field that we have created here we need to provide the form key controller for that, let's use amount controller and whether it's a number or not, yes, it's a number. And the title, uh, let it be as donation amount. And for hint, we can give it as enter any amount you like. And we need to import this from constraint.nat file that we have recently created. So here we are getting some problem because we have made scaffold as fonts, it will not be cons. Now it's okay. Now you'll find a simple text form field. Now we can wrap this with a row and also use expand it and provide the flex as five. So if we keep on adding more widget, it will still use flex five. For that reason, we have added. Now, let us add a size box of width 10. We'll be having a list of currency list. For now, let us only keep a small list. But according to you, you can change it. And then we'll have a selected currency. Let's keep it as USD. Now, for our drop down, we'll be using the drop down menu widget that is an inbuilt widget. So, first, we'll be using the drop down menu and we are providing the return type as string here since we are using the currency list that we are provided is in form of string and here we'll first have a decoration so for that let's let's use input decoration theme and here to match the decoration of the text form field we'll be using some content padding and after that we'll be using an enabled border of of color 
colors dot gray dot shade six hundred. We'll keep the initial selection to the first item of the list, and then we need to add the on selected function. Here we are getting the return value as a as in form of string. So for that, we'll uh, we'll set the state and convert the selected currency to the value that is selected. And after that, we need to provide the drop down menu entries. For this, we are going to map our currency list and we also need to provide a return type. For return type, we are using drop down menu entry and having a return type of string. Here we are getting the value as string. We'll be using and returning this value in form of drop down menu entry. And then we'll keep the value as the value and also the label as the value. Since drop down menu entries is in accepting us to provide a list, then we need to convert all of them to list. Now let's check it. Now we have successfully created a drop down where we can choose any currency we like. And also the amount, it's showing us the numbering keyboard. Now after the row, we are going to add one more a reusable text field. So just add this. This will be for our name. Again, we'll add one more uh, reusable text field. This will be for our address. Now, after this, we are going to add another size box, and then we'll add the another reusable text form field. This time, what we want? This time, what we want? We want to add another text form field. Along with the city, you will be asking the state. So for that, we can wrap this with a row. And here we can wrap this with an widget expanded. Here, let us provide the flex as 5. And again, provide a size box. Here, we'll be using one more expanded widget. This time, it will be state. We, are, we need to provide the short code. Here, we are using state October. So this will be like this. Let's add a size box of height 10. After that, we are going to be adding a similar text file field of country and pin code of the same logic. And after that, we'll add another size box of height 12. Now, after this size box of I12, we'll be having an elevated button. For that, we'll first be having a size box of I50 and width to double dot infinity. Here, we'll be having a child that will be an elevated button. And for on press, we are not going to provide anything for now. And for style, we'll be using elevated button dot style form. Here we are providing the background color as colors dot blue accent dot shade for width, and then we also need to provide the child property. So for child, we are using text text. Uh, let it be proceed to pay, and we also need to add some kind of styling for that. Let's use text type of colors dot white and font of size sixty. So this will look this will look something like this. Now we have successfully completed our UI part. Now for integrating Stripe with our Flutter application, we need to have a Stripe account. If you don't have a Stripe account, then you can create it. It's very easy. And if you already have an existing account, then from here you need to create a new account and here you need to provide the company name and the country of operation and then you need to click on create it will create a company for you and from there you need to visit api keys for developer here you will be having the publishable key and the secret key we'll be needing both of them now if you visit flutter stripe documentation here you will find that this asking us to first add our publishable key. For this, what we need to do, we need to visit our main.dat file and here first we need to make this async, then use widget flutter binding dot initialize. It will initialize all the widgets, but 
for integrating Stripe, we need to add two more packages. So open the terminal again and type Flutter or add Flutter Flutter dot env and http. So these two packages are now added. Now we need to add our publishable keys and secret keys inside our environment variable. So first, let's create a name like Stripe Publish Key and from here just copy the publish key and paste it here and also Stripe Secret Key Click on Reveal and then copy the secret key. Now we'll be using this environment variable file to access our secret keys. First, we need to load our .env file. So for that, use await .env .load. Here we need to provide the name of the file. Since the file is inside the root directory, we can only provide the file name and it will load the file. And then we need to add our publish key. It will be inside .env. .env. And here we need to provide the name of the variable. It's stripe publish key. Add a null sheet here. So we'll import this for Flutter Stripe and after that we need to call await stripe dot instance dot apply settings. Now we are good to go. Now there are several functions that the Flutter Stripe provides, but we will be mainly needing the init payment and present payment sheet for our payment. Now, our first step here will be to create a payment intent. We can either create that payment intent from our server side and we can also create that intent from our client side. In our case, we are going to be working with the client side. Now, when we call this payment intent API, it will give a response like this. It will contain the ID, amount and other things. But from here, we will be needing the client secret and the payment intent ID. Let's test by sending a post request. So for this, I'm using Thunder Client. Now let us test the payment intent endpoint by sending a post request. So here, if buyer name, billing address, shipping address, or description isn't provided, then the payment will fail. So for that reason, for forwarding the payment intent API, we need to pass all this information. So for that reason, we are accepting this input from the user. So we'll just copy the endpoint, paste it here. It should be a post request. We need to provide our secret key. Copy the secret key. Inside headers, visit authorization. Use Beardle. Paste the secret key. Inside body, it should be form and code. Here first we need to provide the description. Let me use let me use this example only. Then the shipping name. Shipping address line one. Postal code. Shipping address city. Shipping address state. Shipping address country. Then the amount for the transaction. Let it be 3000. Here we need to provide the currency. Let it be USD. And also the payment method type. It will be card. Now if we send post request. Here. We are getting the intent ID, amount, and the client secret key. 
So from here we need to capture this client secret and here it is also storing the address. So let's send a post request to this endpoint by using our secret key and the payload in form of form input from our Swift application. Here we need to create one more file in our lib directory. It will be payment dot dot. Here create a future function, create payment intent, and here we'll be accepting all the all the parameters that are required for the body payload. Make it async. We need to send the post request to this endpoint. Copy this. And here it will be final URL is equal to URI.parse. And we also need our secret key. This will be inside .env, .uv, and then the name of our environment variable. Type secret key. Add a null check. And then we need to parse the body. We need to provide all the attributes that are required, like this. We are simply accepting the currency and converting it to lowercase. And here we are providing a name of donation, like test donation. And here we are accepting your, here we are using the name, address, pin, country, state that the user is filling for us. And passing to this function, then our founding response will be await. So here we need to import HTTP for that was import package HTTP dot dot as HTTP. Now we can call HTTP dot post to our URL. But here we need to pass headers like we did headers like this. Here it will be our authorization. will be viewable and our secret and then we also need to provide the content type because the body type that we are sending is in form of form and code so for that reason we need to add content type as application slash x www form and code URL and then we need to pass the body that we are creating from the inputs provided by the user if our response dot status code is equal to 200 it means it's a success in that case we can get the json using json decode we will pass the response dot body and then we can use print the json response that we are getting and we can also return the json if the response is not 200 in that case we can print error in creating error in calling payment intent now we need to simply call this create intent function now if we go to the documentation of flutter strike Function. Here it is creating an init payment sheet function. Just copy this and inside our home.datpy, here we are going to paste this function. Now we don't need Apple Pay and GPay for now. We can remove this. And we also don't need this ready now. But here, it's calling the create test payment sheet. This is the function that is calling the API or the server to get the response of payment intent like we are getting in this response. So for this, first we need to add strike. And here the name of the function was create payment intent that we have recently created. Here 
we need to pass name, address, and everything. So our name was inside name container. Address was name controller of text. Address was inside address controller of text. Pin was inside pin code controller dot text. City city controller dot text. State and state controller dot text. Country and country controller dot. Country controller dot text. Currency was inside our currency controller. Currency was the selected currency and amount was inside amount controller dot text. Now if we call this here we are creating intent on the client side by calling Stripe API and then we will get some response and from there we will create a init payment sheet here we need to pass the merchant name here we need to pass the merchant name let it be a test domain sheet Test merchant. Here we need to be passing the client secret. Now, if we go to this response, we'll find that client secret was inside the key client secret. So, if we if the data contains all the response, then it will be in client secret, and employee key is not there for now. But the ID was the customer ID, so it will be customer ID. Now it's okay. Now we need to simply call this function in it payment sheet when we press the elevated button. Now we don't need to set the state here. Now if we call if we press this proceed to pay button, it should show us a payment intent screen so for that what we are going to do first we have several text form field and each of the text form field is using a form key so if we press the button first we should be validating all the text form field so currently we have no validation what we can do inside our constant dot dot so we don't have any uh, validator here First, add a validator and then we need to wrap it with a widget form. And here we need to pass the key as the form key widget dot form key. And now, if we try to press proceed to pay, here, it's, here it is, here it is showing us cannot be empty, but it is also giving us a bottom overflow to fix this. We can mainly visit home.dart and wrap this column with single child phone view and the problem will be fixed. Now we need to also add the controller. It will be widget dot controller, the controller that we are passing to this. Now if we try to create a donation of 1000, let's give a name. Now here it is asking that Android enable on back invoked callback to true. So we need to set this inside our manifest file Android app src name manifest here. Need to add this. Now save it. Now try to press it again. Now it is not getting reflected, so let's stop the app and try to run it again.
So now it's okay. Now what we need to do after we have set up. Now we are not getting any problem. Now we have set up the init payment sheet. Now we need to call another function. So we need to first wrap it with tie catch. It will be await stripe dot instance stores present payment sheet. And it will open the payment sheet for the customer to complete the pay for completing the payment. And also add catch. Here, if this provide, if the payment gets completed, it will don't it will not raise any error. But if it does not complete, it will throw an exception. So for that, we need to catch it. If this complete successfully, in that case, we should show a snack bar. For that, let us show a simple snack bar, like payment done, and in case. Let us show a simple snack bar in case of payment is done. And if the payment gets failed, we should show that uh, payment failed. And this should be red. And we can also print it. Payment. So now let's try to cross it to pay. In this case, it's opening the test payment gateway. Here for testing, we can add for to for to. Everything will be perfect, and then we can add something for it. Anything will work. If we cross it to pay now. Now it's showing success, but as we noted that we did a payment of $200, but it is only showing $2 payment to be done. So for that, we need to do one change here. The amount that we are entering, it should be multiplied by 100. First, we need to convert the amount to integer. And after that, we need to multiply that with 100 to match the exact amount entered by the user. And then we need to convert that to string. Now, if we try to pay, it is showing the payment as $200. It's correct. Now, if we cancel it, it is showing us payment field. Now, in this way, if we try to change the currency, like let it be IMO, and if we also try to change the country here, Currency is also getting changed. Now our payment is all getting success. Now what we can do here, we can add a final touch to this. We can add, we can add a boolean value that whether the person has donated or not. Donated. In that case, we can show the padding of similar padding like this. Now here we can add a child as column and inside column we can set the cross access element to start like usual and then we can have some children's then for children's will be having a text thanks for your 
amount controller dot text and the selected currency donation. After that, we'll have a size box of height six. Then a text. We appreciate your support. Then another size box, and it will. Here we are going to create another elevated button. For that, we are using a size box of fifty and width of double dot infinity. Child will be elevated button. The same style, and on press, we are going to change as donated to false. It means uh, the person is willing to donate again. So we are converting this. And one thing, one more thing to do here is that if our payment is done, we then need to remove this text editing controller's text. So for that, what we can do, we can just clear all the controllers except the amount controller because we are going to show that inside our next screen. Now, if we are asking when the setting has donated to false in that case. We also need to convert the amount controller dot text to uh, amount controller dot clear so that it clears the amount. Here, if our payment is successful, in that case, we need to set the state and set has donated to true so that it will change the UI. Now, this time we are trying with an Indian address. Let's give it a try. We provided Indian shipping address, but for payment, we are using US Visa card. So there is high chances that our transaction may get declined. So here we are getting something went wrong. Let's change our country to India. I will provide this card link in description. Now let us fill up with Indian card. Now let's pay. Now it's asking us for the 2D secure portal. It click on continue. For Indian region, we need to process any card transaction through 2D secure. Now our payment is done and your, our UI has also changed and it's showing thank you for your 10,000 INM donation. Now we can also try with uh, another currency. Let's fill it. Now we are using an US address. And for payment, we will also be using US card. So we will not be having any problem in our transaction. Let's click proceed. Now add the card number and pay. Now our transaction is successful. And it's also showing the amount. Here we can visit our Stripe dashboard, click on payments. Here it will show that what are the payments that we have received and what are the payments that are processed and cancelled, everything. We can view it from here. So that's all for this video. I hope that you can now integrate Stripe with your Flutter application very easily.